Good afternoon. I'm honored to be with you. I love questions. And in the next few minutes, what I want to explore is the way powerful questions can help us unleash our collective power. Einstein is reputed to have said, if I had an hour to solve a problem and my life depended on it, I would take 55 minutes to identify the right question. Once I knew the right question, I would only need five minutes to solve the problem. Now, Einstein may have been talking about scientific problems, but the same principle applies in the human and organizational realms. Getting the question right is vital, especially if we want to achieve breakthroughs on the questions, on the issues that most truly matter, the issues on which our lives depend, or the lives of our, our teams, our organizations, our communities. Powerful questions mobilize, focus, and direct our collective intelligence. And increasingly, in this time of extraordinary transformation, harnessing our collective intelligence is the key to our consciously creating healthy businesses, resilient communities, and vibrant cultures that are life-affirming and sustainable. So what do I mean by a powerful question? And what does working with a powerful question actually look like in organizations where I do most of my work? I want to share three stories from work my colleagues and I have done and illustrate three different dimensions of powerful questions. First, a powerful question is one that stops us in our tracks, one that cuts through the stories with which we ordinarily protect and defend ourselves, one that puts us in touch with deeper sources of meaning and value. When Bob Haas became CEO of Levi's many years ago, the company was hemorrhaging money. At that time, Levi's was no longer the privileged provider of, of cool apparel to young people. Only in China was the company's market growing, and the upside there was huge. Then Amnesty International released a report that said corruption and child labor were endemic in Levi's Chinese manufacturing facilities. The timing couldn't have been worse. Immediately, the company's leadership began to debate how to spin the story and minimize the damage. But Bob had come into the CEO role determined to restore Levi's heritage as a values-based company. And child labor, corruption, and spin had no place in the company he was trying to create. So Bob had one question. The powerful question he asked is, is it true? Is it true? Levi's investigated, and the answer came back, yes, Bob, it's true. Then against all advice, including advice from his investment community, Bob took the executive decision to pull Levi's out of China until the company could operate there in a way that was consistent with its values. It could have spelled doom for the company, but by coincidence, if coincidence applies in a story like this, a young upstart media company called MTV picked up the story. Isn't it cool, they reported, that a global corporation puts its values first and puts its profits at risk in support of human rights? Suddenly, Levi's was cool again. The story went viral and sales surged. Just as importantly was what happened inside the company. People who had been disenchanted and demoralized by the company's poor performance, were inspired by the stand Bob took and reinvested themselves, became more engaged in creative ways in helping turn the company around. Bob's question, is it true, was a powerful question. More importantly, it was the right question, and Bob made the right move in response to the answer. So a powerful question puts us in touch with deeper sources of meaning and value. A powerful question challenges our assumptions, opens us up to possibilities. 
encourages us to collaborate in ways we might never have thought possible. I worked for many years with D. Hawk, the founder of Visa, the credit card company, and, and groups were industry groups and multi-stakeholder co coalitions were constantly coming to us seeking to find new ways to partner across the boundaries that separated them. They all wanted to replicate the success of Visa. But founding Visa had been fraught with challenge. Bankers were notorious for protecting their turf and insisted on controlling every aspect of their operations. D only succeeded in moving the conversation that eventually led to the founding of Visa forward by focusing the group's attention first on this question. What can we only do together that none of us can do alone? What can we only do together that none of us can do alone? And then, if anything were possible, how might we collaborate to create the world's premier system for electronic transactions? If anything were possible. Breakthrough came because even in the face of ongoing resistance from members of his own working group, D kept insisting that the group look not at what was the way banks currently manage credit cards and tweaking that, but on what ought to be. And eventually they came to see that if they were willing to relax a little bit of control and collaborate in a few very narrowly defined areas, they could create a marketplace far larger than any of them could have created on their own. By the way, D once told me he made two mistakes in founding Visa. And the, the first and most important was he didn't have cardholders and merchants at the table when Visa was established. If he had, the conversations would have been much different and we might have avoided a lot of the problems we have with the credit card industry today. A powerful question challenges assumptions, opens up possibility, and invites us to collaborate in ways we could never have imagined. A powerful question taps into higher purpose. When our colleague Barbara Waugh was a global change leader at Hewlett Packard, she was asked by the director of HP Labs to undertake an inquiry around this question. What does it mean for us to be the best industrial research lab in the world? Barb took that question out and talked with people in the labs all over the planet. Good conversations were had. A wide range of creative ideas were put forward and productivity increased. Then one day, a young engineer came to Barbara's office and said, Barb, the question you're asking is good, but I think there's a better one. The question we ought to be asking is how could we be the best industrial research lab for the world? How could we be the best industrial research lab for the world? A simple shift, one word, but it completely transformed the meaning of the question. Barb felt a shiver go down her spine, and when she took that question out, others had the same response. Everybody in the company, not just in the labs, wanted to be part of that conversation. There was a hunger to see <coughs> what Hewlett Packard could do, not just for its bottom line, but for the communities and cultures in which it operated. What does it mean for Hewlett Packard to be for the world? What does it mean for my team to be for the world? What does it mean for me as an individual to be for the world? HP for the world, as this came to be known, spawned an enormous wave of creative and collective energy throughout the company. A number of major initiatives were, were created and Barb herself went on to lead the e-inclusion initiative, which is still bringing digital technologies to the world's poorest people. So a powerful question taps into highest, higher purpose. It travels well and it inspires 
ownership and engagement by those who take part in the conversation. So I want to suggest that one of the most important practices any of us can adopt is working with powerful questions. What does that mean? What does it ask of us? Craft, for there is an art to creating powerful questions and architecting conversational leadership. Commitment, because it takes time, but mostly courage. For a powerful question is a question to which we truly don't know the answer. It's a question that asks us to be open and vulnerable, willing to shift how we view ourselves and others. It's a question that takes us out of our comfort zone and leads us on a journey of mutual discovery and co-creation. It's a question that invites us to trust the magic in the middle, the wisdom, love, and creativity that are present when we turn to each other, willing to listen and learn, committed to the common good. So as I close, the question I want to leave you with is what question, if you were to explore and answer it, would create a breakthrough in your life or work today. Thank you.